Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to talk all about wet palettes, giving you everything you need to know to get the most out of them. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V. Style. One of the first things I want to say right up top is that if you don't like wet palettes, if you've tried it before and you really know it's not for you, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with using a dry palette or a cold palette or anything else. I don't care. Put the paint on your back of your hand and paint from there. Whatever works for you is fine. But for those of you who are maybe interested in a wet palette or have had challenges with them and want to get the most out of them, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to talk you through all the different elements of sort of using your wet palette and making sure that you're not uh, going wrong or making any missteps, they're going to lead to a bad experience. So let's talk about my top tips for your wet palette. All right, first things first. There's lots of brands of wet palettes. I have basically all of them a long time ago. If you look at my early videos, I had a Masterson. Um, I've had this Army Painter one. I've used the wet palettes from Redgrass Games in both size. But you'll notice in my videos now, what I've come to is the uh, exemplar from Game Envy. And this is my favorite one, not particularly because of the construction of the thing, although that is very good, um, but for the reasons of the sponge and the paper we will talk about later. Um, in the end, there's not a tremendous amount of differences between the various and sundry brands. Um, most of the wet palettes with the proper steps and care can deliver uh, a high quality performance out of them. Though I will say I do much prefer the Game Envy. Um, I like the way it clicks shut. I like that it has the little uh, hole at the top to control the humidity and make sure it doesn't get too humid in there. Um, I like that it has a little flip top with a dry palette in it. You can like actually put your cell phone in it and stuff which is actually pretty nice for when you're using it on the road. So it just has a little bunch of comfort features that I really enjoy. The thing that actually sets the Game Envy apart and why I continue to stick with it is for reasons of what's inside the wet palette we'll talk about in just a moment. All right, first things first, let's talk about getting this bad boy filled up with water. So here I've got my sponge and I've got, it's, it's wet, but there's not enough water in it. If you look at the side of the wet palette, you can still see the water line is way down below the sponge. So that's my first tip, which is when you're using your wet palette, the water level needs to be basically even or even just slightly above the sponge, just slightly. Uh, and if you're, this can adjust based on your climate. So if you're in a very, very dry environment, take two sponges, stack them on top of each other, and then fill the whole thing with water. That will help give you a lot deeper reservoir, a deeper well of water to keep your paint hydrated. So if you're, you know, in the in a desert climate or something like that, that can be a great way to go. If you're in a very humid climate uh, or humid area, traditional one sponge and up, fill the water up to the sides and you should be good to go. If your wet palette is getting low, then refill it. I keep this water bottle next to me and refill the palette every time I sit down. Um, and that water bottle, uh, much like the water in the sponge itself, has antibacterial, uh, antimicrobial elements in it. So I don't fill it with just water. I fill it with a drop of uh, uh, dish soap, basically, um, like ultra strong dish soap just like one little tiny drop in the bottom, and then fill the bottle with water. That way I know whenever I'm putting water in, it's clean, especially because that can sit on my desk for a couple days before I refill the bottle, and I don't want it to get gross, basically. Now for the most important reason I actually love the exemplar, the Game Envy web palette. Um, that's mainly because I of the sponge. So just recently they have created this new sponge. It's sort of this dual layer sponge. The bottom layer is more nylon. It's antimicrobial. The water uh, flows up through it way better than the traditional just like white or yellow sponge you'd have with most of the other uh, web palettes that are out there. And the sponge matters a lot. Uh, and in fact, you know, doing something like having a more nylon based sponge, think like um, clamshell material here actually, if you can find that, that can be a great replacement. Uh, but I love this sponge, it, it works well, it hydrates my paint better than any I've had, and it really does prevent um, anything from going bad in the water. Like because it's the sponge itself is largely antimicrobial, never have any issues. Now I take additional steps because I want my palette to be fresh and clean at all times, 
um, but I really love this particular sponge and uh, it just works perfectly for me. Um, the next step is of course to put some paper on here. This is the other place that I like. There's different, all the different companies make different paper. None of it's really that special. You can always just use Reynolds wrap. You want to use the non-wax if you can. Uh, if you're in a super humid environment, actually using the wax paper like Reynolds wrap, like baking paper, it's called different things in different countries, um, can be a good idea. So if you're in a super humid area, um, you can grab the wax paper and that'll work better. I know people like Trevarian favor actually using the wax paper, um, but in general, you want to stick to sort of the non-wax baking, baking paper for your average uh, environments. Now, I love the Game Envy paper because, again, it just works perfectly with the sponge. It lets the exact right amount of hydration through for the way, for my environment and my level of humidity in the basement. Your mileage may often vary. There is the, the difference in humidities can make huge differences in the performance of wet palettes, but for me, their paper is fantastic, fits perfectly, I love it, and it hydrates the paint exactly how I would want. Um, so it's a winner for me. So it, when it comes to the Game Envy, both the sponge and the paper are what I tend to use. Um, but let's talk about keeping this thing nice and fresh and clean, because that is the next step. You're leaving something that just has standing water on your desk. That is a invitation to mold, okay? Uh, again, the more humid your environment, the more likely you are to run into it. If you are in the middle of Phoenix, Arizona or something, this probably isn't a problem for you. Congratulations, you'll have much different challenges when painting. Um, there's lots of steps you can do to prevent mold in your wet palette. The first thing you can do is put some copper in there. Now, some people use pennies. I don't actually like that. Um, most modern pennies have very, very little copper in them. They're mostly zinc with a very thin copper plating around the outside. Um, the What I prefer is actually just copper wire. If you're going to go this direction, you can buy like spools of pure copper wire. Relatively cheap still, although it's been getting more expensive as time goes on. But you only need to buy it once, so it's not that big a deal, and it can be useful for doing things like making lightning for your figures later. Um, you can sort of wind that amongst the bottom, just lay down a crisscross version of it under your sponge, good to go. That will help. The copper is antimicrobial in itself, but it's not perfect. As I said at the beginning, I always put a single drop of dish soap in the bottom under the center of my sponge before I fill it with water. Um, I see a lot of people ask me the question, do you use like filtered water or dish water straight out of the tap? Where I am, the tap water is really nice, it's, uh, and so we don't have like particularly hard or soft water. It doesn't have a lot of detritus in it, so I just use tap water and I've never had an issue with it. Um, if you want to get like distilled water, you can. Again, it's going to depend on the quality of your local uh, water and how hard or soft it is. You have a bunch of other junk in there and so on. Um, but just a simple drop of dish soap goes a long way because, again, it's like, I mean, when I say the tiniest drop, I mean take the top of that Dawn and you're just like, you just put one little thing in there, fill it up with water, let the extra suds and stuff rinse out the side, and you're good to go. But I don't stop there. I want to take you to my favorite product. This is the Palette Guard uh, from Mini Masterworks. Um, this stuff rules. Um, it's great. I put about eight to ten drops in around the uh, palette, and I've never had a problem with mold since I started using it. Um, I'll throw a link down below so you can get them. They're not a sponsor or anything. I don't have any affiliation with the company. I'd love to. If you want to, you know, do an affiliate thing, hey, reach out. I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to rep your products because it works really well. But you know, I'll just throw the link down there so everybody else can give it a shot. Um, I really love this stuff. It stopped any any sense of mold. So the combination for me of the little drop of dish soap, the water that I'm filling it with also has the same thing, and then I use a little bit of that um, uh, that uh, palette guard every time I sort of fill up the palette, and I have had zero problems leaving my palette, sometimes for like a week without changing the water or longer, and no issues. So I am a big believer in it. It has worked really well for me. Um, so I want to take just a moment here to talk about actually working with your palette. We've talked a lot about the prep, the setup, keeping it clean, but I want to talk a little bit about palette discipline because this is also important to getting the most out of your palette. 
So the way I work with my palette, and everybody might be a little different here, but the way I work with it is I put my little drops that I'm, the, you know, the original drops of paint on the side of the palette. But I never actually thin those original drops of paint. What I then do is take the, that paint from those original drops into a new pool and thin it there. I also, if I want to mix, I will grab some of paint A, take it to a new spot on the palette, usually kind of in the ge same general geography, then go into paint B, grab it, mix it, dip my brush in water, and to thin it out. The reason I do this is so I always have a relatively stable original pool of paint um, that isn't super spread out thin. Your wet palette is hydrating and causing osmosis over a, over a surface area. So the less of the paint, the more the paint is a tiny pool, like the, the more it's sort of holding its shape as a drop on the palette, the less hydration is coming up into it. When you spread your paint very thin, two things start happening. One, it will become more hydrated, but also you will evaporate more because the surface area on the top is also bigger, and so there is more surface area for water to evaporate. So if you're in any kind of dry climate or you know anything that's not super humid, spreading your paint out very thin and thinning only in your original pool will basically cause the paint to dry on your wet palette because it will evaporate faster than the palette can hydrate it. Um, that's my basement. It's pretty dry here. So I, that's why I avoid this because when I'm working out of those pools, that's just what I'm currently working on. But my original paints stay intact, workable, hydrated, had getting just the right amount of water in and losing just the amount of just the right amount of water to evaporation. That's my palette discipline. One, it keeps my colors arranged and makes it easier to work with them. But also, two, it makes it so they don't either uh, dry out too fast or become overhydrated or I lose the color and then have to go back onto the, the, the pot and get more paint out. It stops me from wasting paint. Uh, so all in all, um, that's my particular sense of palette discipline and how I work with it. It has a lot of advantages, but you know, you may want to work differently Everybody's got their own habits when it comes to their wet palette. Find the one that's right for you. The last thing I want to talk about with your wet palette is to sort of dispel a myth. The wet palette is not magic. It is not sorcery. It is not meant to keep any paint regardless that you put on the wet palette workable ad nauseum, just forever, infinity amount of time, right? I will see a lot of people complain because they will put paint on a wet palette, they'll work some, they close the wet palette, they leave, they come back the next day, 12 hours later or whatever, and it's, you know, overly hydrated or dry or whatever. Like, it didn't remain stable in the same way. And that's not weird. That's very standard. Usually they become overhydrated and basically become water. The reason for that is because when you put that lid on, you're creating a closed environment. It is now building and cycling the humidity in there. All the water that's evaporating is staying in the wet palette and creating effectively a little greenhouse in your wet palette. So that's what, and that paint is going to overhydrate and overhydrate and overhydrate because it'll just stop evaporating but keep taking water in until it just reaches maximum saturation. You can, with things like the Game Envy, kind of pop the top and that will stop some of it, but if you're uh, but if you're keeping your wet palette appropriately wet, you know, with enough moisture in there, the better answer is to just not put the lid back all the way on. Um, when you don't put the lid all the way on, then more interchange happens. Just leaving it slightly cockeyed to the side will make sure that you're still trapping some of that in there, um, but there's still some air exchange and hence you're not building an ultra-humid environment. Again, this will be based a lot on the particular humidity in your environment. So mess around with it, play with it, see what happens. If you get it right, um, you can keep some paints, and that's really important to understand, some paints. Brands have different levels of sort of hydrophobia, hydrophilia, where they'll, they'll take on water or resist water more or less. So certain paints are brands are much better performers over time on a wet palette than others. Okay, so your, your mileage may vary based on the brand of paint you favor, the humidity in your area, and so on.
All right, there you go. That's everything I hope you wanted to know about your wet palette and getting the most out of it. In case you've got more questions, drop those down below. Tell me what wet palette you've used, you've loved, your tips, your tricks. Share your insights down in the comments for everybody else. I'm sure there's things I forgot, and I want to know your best tips. Maybe they can help me as well. If you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you uh, want to support the channel, lots of ways you can do so. Down below you can find uh, affiliate links, including for Game Envy, if you want to pick up one of these wet palettes. Um, I'm always happy to, uh, to, to help direct people toward Game Envy. I love the company. I'm happy to be proud to partner with them on this affiliate link. Those affiliate links all uh, don't cost you anything extra. In fact, they often save you money and come with a discount code, but they really do help the channel and give a great kickback without you spending anything extra. Of course, there's also our Patreon, focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.